early on when we began to uh, have agents like tamoxifen, which was developed in the early 1970s, late 1960s, and I've treated probably eight to 10,000 women with that drug. Um, we, we treated for five years. And the, the, tr the, the trial that we, we used at that time to, to determine if tamoxifen was effective was a, a trial of five years of tamoxifen versus placebo. That was in the days when we actually used placebos in, in clinical trials. And tamoxifen uh, decreased the recurrence, the systemic recurrence, recurrence in bones, lungs, liver, by about 30%. So it was really a huge breakthrough. Uh, we didn't know if, if, the, if five years was the magic time to stop. So we, at the end of that trial, we took about a fifth of the women in that trial and asked them to keep, to keep going on another five years. And that part of the trial was aborted uh, about a year and a half into it because suddenly we, re we realized this tamoxifen drug was actually causing uterine cancer in some women. And so the, uh, the, the managers of the trial broke the code, looked, and uh, at that point, a year and a half, so that would have been about six and a half years into it, the women that were on the tamoxifen at that point did not seem to be protected or having less relapses. So it kind of went into the textbooks that five years was the right amount of time. As it turns out, uh, it's not. Uh, in Europe, they went on and did two very large trials looking at five years of tamoxifen versus 10 years. And we've learned that uh, going on an extra five years to the 10-year mark reduces the death rate from cancer by about 4%. So it's not a huge, huge benefit, but it's a definite benefit. And so what's been proposed in the last year and a half or so is that that oncologists, that physicians and their patients should consider continuing on for an extra five years using either the tamoxifen-like drug or the aromatase inhibitor, which is the alternative drug we use.